Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to look at reading and writing multiple objects of serializing and deserializing multiple objects. And I've got this program that I created in the last tutorial. In fact, we've got two programs, one for reading objects and one for writing objects. And I've sort of gutted them so that we're not reading or writing any objects here at the moment, but I've got the rest of the framework left in there. We've also got this person object from the last tutorial, which just has an ID and a name property, which can be set via a constructor. So uh, I'm going to let, let's imagine that we, we've, we've got an array of these person objects. Let's say up here, person array people equals, um, and I'll use uh, curly parentheses to create a array to initialize an array of these uh, person objects. Let's say new person. I'll give this one a name of Sue and an ID of one. And let's have new person ID 99 name Mike and new person ID seven name of Bob. So we've got three people in this array here. And uh, it might be surprising to know uh, that an array in Java is, is actually just an object, in a sense, just an ordinary object. And we can simply serialize it and deserialize it as we would any object. And in fact, arrays are serializable as long as the objects in it are serializable. And uh, in other words, if they implement the serializable interface, which is all you have to do to make an object serializable, then you can uh, read and write an array of it. So to demonstrate that, I can say here, os.writeObject object out um, actually it's the wrong file let's go to the read objects file write object sorry there we go so let's write this array let's say os dot write object people and in this read objects file let's say people array people actually that's person array so person array people equals and I'll cast to the right type here and I'll just say os dot read object like that. So let's save that and run it. So I'll run write objects, right click and run run as Java application. And let's go to read objects. So right click and run as Java application. And, uh, oh yeah, it would help actually if I iterated through these and actually displayed them. So let's say for person, person in people and, um, sys out person. I'm in Budapest where it's 40 degrees. And so my brain isn't perhaps fully working as well as one might hope, but I'll right click this read objects now and go to run as Java application. And now we can see that we've successfully uh, read that array back. Um, you, you can also, uh, if, if you've seen array lists before, you might wonder if you can serialize and deserialize array lists. And the answer is you can do that in exactly the same way. We haven't covered array list yet in this series of tutorials. And that's because I've put uh, the stuff about Java collections in a separate section of this tutorial. Or uh, if you look on caveofprogramming.com, it's in like a, se a different uh, section for YouTube. But um, in my Java collections videos, I talk about array lists and they're, they're basically like a resizable array. So very, very, very useful. I'd highly recommend uh, that you check out my video on array lists if you haven't done, done so already. And if you don't know about them, but let's, let's create an array list here just to demonstrate this. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll create an array list of person objects. And with ArrayList, it's a template class, so you have to specify what type of object it's going to store in these angle brackets. And let's call this people list equals new array list of person. And uh, instead of writing these all out again, which I could do, I'll just use the arrays.asList method to turn that array, or well, well, to initialize the array list with it, actually. And now um, I'll, I'll leave this original code in, writing of the original list so that you can refer to it. But what we'll do is I'll now serialize the array list as well. So let's say 
os.writeObjectPersonPeople list. So we're serializing now first the original array and then the array list version of it. And then read objects, after I've read the array here, I can now say array, array list of person. Let's call this people list again equals, and I'll put the typecast in array list, array list of person os.read object. And now we can also iterate through the array list in pretty much the same way. This is now people list, but the rest of the code is the same. And if I run this now, so let's run write object, right click and run as Java application. So we've written the objects and now let's go to read objects, right click and run as Java application. And now you can see that we've read these all over again. So we've written and read them as an array list. The only annoying thing here is this warning, which says type safety unchecked cast from object to array list person. And uh, I think this has to do with type erasure because uh, with a normal object, Java can determine what kind of type of object it is. And it can figure out whether, for example, this is a safe cast to do or not. When we read, uh, when we use read object here, our, our array is returned as an object, but that object contains within it, as I understand it, the type information that says, yes, it is actually to be precise, an array of person objects. That is not the case with array lists because with parameterized classes in general, uh, classes that take these types in these diamond brackets, um, they suffer from type erasure which means that when you compile your Java program, the information about this type here is actually lost. That's called type erasure. So this is like um, a grammatical thing that helps stop you trying to put the wrong um, object, wrong type of object in your array lists. But that information is no longer stored when the program is compiled. And so when you serialize an array list and then deserialize it, when it's deserialized, the uh, type information is no longer there in full because in, indeed it was no longer there even when the program ran. Uh, the type, this type is erased. And, uh, and that's why we get this warning. And the, probably the easiest thing to do, to be honest, is just suppress it. So you can just um, put a at sign and suppress warnings, capital S, suppress warnings, annotation. And in round brackets and within double quotes, we can say unchecked. Let's save that and uh, let's click this error and whoops, I've got a spelling mistake there. There we go, suppress warnings. And that suppresses the warning, but it looks a bit ugly and it feels wrong to be suppressing warnings. So I don't really like it. And short of really going to quite um, long lengths, there's, there's no easy way around that. Although certainly you can find ways around it if you want to serialize and deserialize an array list. One uh, last thing that I want to show you is you can certainly serialize and deserialize these people objects, person objects, one at a time, or the same for any object. And that the easiest thing to do is to write in advance the number of the number of objects that you're going to be dealing with. So we could say here, let's say we want to serialize this array object by object, one one object at a time, or maybe we could take this people list. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Let's say here, um, os.writeInt and get the size of this array list. So for an array list to get the number of objects in it, we say dot size with round brackets because it's a method. And for an, an array, we'd use dot length with no round brackets because it's a, a property of the array object. So here we're writing to the file the number of objects that we're about to write. And I can now say for person, we'll use like an enhanced for loop, a for each loop, person, person in people list. And we'll say os.write object person. And then when we read them back, all we have to do is we can say int num equals 
um, object input stream dot read int. So all, all these, all this combined reading and writing of different objects is fine as long as we remember to read back the exact same number of objects in the exact same order that we originally wrote them in. And now let's say for int i equals naught i less than num and i plus plus we will read those objects one by one so person 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 equals os dot read object and we just need to cast that to a person save it and let's do sys out on it again so now next time we run it we should have nine person objects there so i'll run write objects right click and run as java application and read objects right click and run as java application and hey presto we've now um, successfully read and written them one by one and the key to that the, the easiest thing to do rather than trying to figure out when you've run run out of objects to read it's easier if you just write the number that you're going to um, write and that, that you therefore number need to read um, in advance so then you can read that number back and read the right number of objects um, that's it for this tutorial one last little thing actually that I want to show you uh, so that's not quite it is someone um, uh, left a, a comment on on my last video that shouldn't this os.close be in the finally block and shouldn't we check to see if it's null? Well, the answer is, yeah, I, I sort of agree really. It, it probably should be. Um, the reason I didn't put it in one is because, uh, at this point, if, if this, this could easily fail because we might not be able to read the appropriate file, or in this case here, we might not be able to write to the appropriate file. But once we've got the file output stream, it's unlikely that object output stream will fail, I think. So this is probably not going to be null and it's probably not going to throw an exception, but nevertheless, it is possible that it could do. So um, really, this isn't great programming. And also, um, I, I don't think we really need to close it. I, I put this in just to get rid of the warning that uh, Eclipse gave me about OS not being closed. But in fact, since we are closing the underlying file, because we're using this try with resources, which will automatically close this object. I don't think we need to necessarily close object output stream. But again, there might be some reason for it that I'm not aware of to do with uh, memory management or something. And uh, so if you want a uh, kind of better practice here, either you could check that this is not null and put it in a finally block as well, uh, down here maybe, before closing it. But, um, Probably since I'm using this try with resources, it's better if I just cut all this stuff here and put a semicolon here and paste this in and also open the object output stream within this try with resources block. Let's just format this. Uh, that's as formatted as it gets apparently. So you can have multiple um, auto closable objects within your try and in Java 7 and onwards. And this will automatically call close on this. So now we can get rid of this and our try with resources will handle it for us automatically. It's, uh, it's, it's a hellishly long line and I, I don't really like putting lots of things in round brackets, but I must admit probably technically it's better to do that than just trying to close something um, down here. Although to be perfectly honest, if I was writing production code, I'd be very tempted just to put os.close down there because I don't think it will be a problem, but I admit that it could be. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. And um, in the next tutorial, we're going to look at the transient keyword. And then after that, we're going to move on from serialization and uh, probably look at annotations, among other things, and also uh, passing by value versus reference, which doesn't quite exist in Java, but there's some stuff to be said about that. So join me again for the next tutorial, and you can always find the latest stuff on www.caveofprogramming.com. And until next time, happy coding.